Hello students, my name is Neeti Seed and thanks for watching Edipedia Word videos. My topic for the presentation is second section of the chapter Plant Growth and Development. In this section of the video, we will discuss about the growth curve and phases of growth seen in plants. Okay, so let's proceed towards our topic that is growth curve in plants. If we uh, plot time on x-axis and growth that is size per weight of an organism on y-axis then we get sigmoidal like curve. The curve can be shown appearing slowly along the line and then it stabilizes. Okay. So this is lag phase, this is log phase or exponential phase and this is stationary phase students. So during the initial stage which we call it as lag phase, the rate of plant growth is slow. The rate of growth then increases rapidly, okay, it grows rapidly during the exponential phase. After some time, the growth rate slowly decreases due to the limitation of nutrients. Because of the nutrient limitation, growth rate it suddenly declines, okay, or it gets to the uh, saturated level. So, this phase constitutes the stationary phase students. The curve obtained by pl plotting growth and time is called as growth curve. So, what it is? It is growth curve. When we plot time on x-axis and growth on y-axis. What is growth? Growth is size per weight of an organism students. This curve is known as growth curve and it is typically sigmoidal shape or s shaped curve if we talk about the plant okay so i hope a growth curve is clear to you now that if we plot time on x-axis and growth on y-axis then we get a curve which we call it as sigmoidal curve okay or s shaped curve which we also call it as growth curve the curve can be shown appearing slowly as you can see during the lag phase the rate of the plant growth is slow see it progresses slowly then rate of the growth increases rapidly see that's why it its shape is like this because it is showing that it is uh, growing at an exponential uh, rate okay after some time the growth rate it slowly decreases due to the limitation of nutrients because nutrients may get uh, degraded that's why growth rate of plant it starts to decrease and this phase it constitutes the stationary phase and this kind of curve is called as sigmoidal or s-shaped curve okay which is seen in plant now come to the phases of growth students. The period of growth is generally divided into three phases which are those first is cell formative phase which we also call it as formative phase. Second is cell enlargement phase. It is also called as phase of elongation and third is cell differentiation phase which we also call it as phase of maturation. So the period of growth in plant is generally divided into three phases. First is cell formation phase, second is cell enlargement phase and third is cell differentiation phase. Let us understand this by looking at a root tip. I will show you the diagram uh, in the later uh, PPT but for the time being just know that these are the phases of the cell division, cell elongation and cell differentiation. During growth, metastomatic cells they pass through the following three phases. First is formative phase where cell formation takes place. Second is cell enlargement uh, phase which we also call it as phase of elongation and this cell elongates by stretching and then comes cell differentiation phase or phase of maturation in which cell gets matured okay and it lacks a uh, power of division okay that means uh, at this stage at the phase of maturation cell has no power of division 
as you can see that uh, this is meristematic cell that means uh, cells which keep on dividing and it is isodiametric that means it has same diameter it give rise to this cell and then nuclear division takes place which we also call it as karyokinesis karyo means nucleus and kinesis means breakdown so nuclear division takes place and then cell plate formation takes place because of the cell plate formation see this is uh, cell plate okay and this is the primary cell wall this is the large uh, vacuole present in the plant cell this is the nucleus and this is the thin film of cytoplasm and this is the phase of elongation that means because of the stretching cell elongates and then it gets converted into a mature cell see this is the mature cell where secondary wall pattern has formed and uh, that's why this uh, phase is called as phase of cell differentiation okay so i hope all three phases of growth are clear to you now cell formation phase where formation of uh, plant cells takes place by karyokinesis then cell enlargement phase or phase of elongation where uh, it elongates because of the stretching and third is cell differentiation phase or phase of maturation where cell gets fully mature uh, by forming secondary wall patterns as i told you the period of the growth is generally divided into three phases namely meristematic elongation and maturation now let us understand this by looking at a root tip see this is the root tip the constantly dividing cells both at the root apex and the shoot apex it represents the meristematic phase of growth i have already taught you in detail about it in my previous sections of presentation so you can refer to those presentation for better understanding okay but now let us understand this by looking at the root tip this is the root apex or root tip here constantly dividing cells are seen that represents the meristematic phase of growth that means meristematic means the cells that keep on dividing okay that has the power of cell division students the cell in this region they are rich in protoplasm and they possess large conspicuous nuclei okay as i have uh, written here that cell in the meristematic phase they have rich protoplasm and they have large nuclei because karyokinesis takes place nuclear division takes place that's why large nuclei is present in meristematic phase cell wall they are primary they are thin and they are cellulosic with abundant plasmodesmita plasmodesmita is a uh, barrier between two cells okay that separates two cells from each other so in the meristematic phase this is uh, it that is present at the root apex and the shoot apex this is the representation of root apex cells in this region they have rich protoplasm and they have larger nuclei and cell wall present in the meristematic phase they are primary they are thin and they are cellulosic with abundant plasmodesmita okay then comes elongation phase it occurs in cells proximal proximal means just next away from the tip this a is meristematic phase and this is elongation phase zones a b c d immediately behind the apex they have elongated most a b c d these are elongation phase it is representing elongation phase and this is g f e they are meristematic and it occurs in cell proximal to meristematic zone cells they have increased vacuolation because of the larger vacuole it helps in the stretching of meristematic cells that's why it gets entered into elongation phase then comes maturation phase it occurs in the cell further away from the apex more proximal to the phase of elongation the cell they attain maximal size in terms of wall thickening and protoplasmic modification and please note that detection of zone of elongation by 
parallel line technique has been done here. Now come to the experiment. Take a germinating bean seed with a radical about 2 cm in length. See this is the typical diagram of uh, seedling. This is radical part which give rise to root system and this is plumule part which give rise to shoot system. So this uh, diagram or this experiment will clearly show that growth is fastest behind the apex or root tip. Okay. So take a germinating bean seed with radical about 2 cm in length. So this is the radical which is about 2 cm in length. Dry the seedling with the help of filter paper and mark the root at 2 mm interval from tip upward with waterproof ink. Remember ink should not be dissolvable in water because you will be uh, placing seedling on the moist filter paper in a petri dish for 24 hours. That's why ink should be waterproof. Then observe the ink marks. A study of the growth region in a root by parallel line marking technique is done. It will be observed that the lines at a little distance behind the tip become widely separated from each other while those at the tip and those higher up remain more or less intact. See, this is the radical part which we uh, which have uh, we put on the petri dish, and this is the uh, seedling which we have observed after 24 hours. So this is the elongation phase phase which took place, or which is fastest behind the apex, and this region is called as elongation phase. So this was our experiment to prove that growth is fastest behind the apex. Apex is tip. And that region is called as cell elongation. Now measurement of growth. How can you measure growth of a plant? Growth is a natural phenomena which occurs in both plants and animals. The growth in length of the plant is measured with the help of equipment which we call it as oxanometer or oxograph. Oxanometer is therefore an instrument which is used to measure the rate of growth of a plant with respect to the shoot length. See this is how it is measured. This is arc oxanometer and this is the plant. Its shoot is uh, tied up with the oxanometer and the growth in length of a plant is measured with the help of oxanometer or oxograph. It is used to measure the rate of growth of a plant with respect to the shoot length students. Okay. So this way you can measure growth of a plant. Oxanometer. See, a thread is tied to the tip of the growth plant and the other end of the thread is tied to the weight. This is the weight part. After passing the thread over the pulley. See, this is the pulley. Okay. This is the other end of the thread which is passed uh, over the pulley and one end of this thread is attached with the growing end of the shoot. The needle attached in the center of the pulley will show deflection. See, this is the arrow or this is the needle which is attached in the center of the pulley and this will show deflection as the plant grows. The deflection can be read on the graduated arc. See, this is the graduated arc. To find out the increase in the length of the plant. Suppose, uh, if we haven't tied uh, here, this plant, then it shows here. This needle is pointing here. But when it grows, it may point out somewhere, somewhere here, uh, 50 at, or at 60 on the graduated scale or on the graduated arc okay this way you can find out the increase in the length of the plant or you can say this way you can measure the growth of a plant by using an equipment which we call it as oxanometer okay now comes growth rate what is that it is increased growth per unit time the growth rate may be arithmetic or geometrical Okay. See, this is arithmetic and this is geometry. 
the increased growth per unit time is termed as growth rate that means how much a plant has grown per unit time that we call it as growth rate students thus the rate of growth can be expressed mathematically an organism or a part of an organism can produce more cells in a variety of ways see this is arithmetic growth and this is geometric growth now let's study about the arithmetic growth that follows mitotic cell division only one daughter cell continues to divide while the other differentiates and matures the simplest expression of arithmetic growth is exemplified by a root elongating at constant rate and on plotting the length of the organ against time a linear curve is obtained see this is the linear curve which is obtained if we plot the length of an organ against the time see this is the time which is plotted on the x axis and on the y axis height of the plant is uh, plotted and then we get a linear curve which uh, shows the length of the organ against time okay mathematically it can be expressed as uh, lt is equals to l0 plus rt what is lt lt is length at time t and l0 is length at time 0 and what is r r is growth rate or elongation per unit time that means how much a plant has grown per unit time okay that is r so this is arithmetic growth now let us see what happens in geometric growth in most systems the initial growth is slow that means in lag phase and it increases rapidly thereafter at an exponential rate okay as it is shown here this is your log phase or exponential phase here both progeny cell they follow mitotic cell division which retain the ability to divide and continue to do so however with limited nutrient supply the growth it slows down leading to stationary phase if we plot the parameter of growth against time we get a typical sigmoidal or s shape curve a sigmoid curve is a characteristic of living organism that grows in natural environment it is typical for all cells tissue or organs of a plant can you think of more similar examples students what kind of curve can you expect in a tree showing seasonal activities so this is geometrical growth on plotting the parameter of growth against time we get a typical sigmoidal curve see this is sigmoidal curve or s shaped curve if we plot size per weight of the organ on y axis and time on x axis then we get a s shaped curve which we also call it as sigmoidal curve a sigmoid curve is a characteristic of living organism that grows in a natural environment it is typical for all cells tissue and organs of a plant and exponential growth can be expressed as w1 o is equals to w0 ert what is w1 it is the final size such as weight final weight final height final number and what is w0 it is the initial size at the beginning of the period what is r r is relative growth rate t is time of growth and e is base of natural logarithmics okay now students what is relative growth rate it is denoted by a small r it is the measure of the ability of plant to produce new plant materials and it is also referred as efficiency index hence the final size of w1 final size such as increase in weight increase in height increase in number it depends on the initial size that is w0 which i have shown you uh, in the previous pvt quantitative comparison between growth can also be made in two ways what are those two ways 
first is absolute growth rate measurement and comparison of total growth per unit time is called as absolute growth rate i repeat measurement and comparison of total growth per unit time is called as absolute growth rate and what is relative growth rate students measurement of growth of a given system per unit time expressed on a common basis is called as relative growth rate for example per unit initial parameter see this is the diagrammatic uh, comparison of absolute and relative growth rate see this is absolute uh, growth rate and this is uh, relative growth rate both leaves a and b they have increased their area by 5 cm square in a given time to produce a1 and b1 leaf see this is a1 and this is b1 leaf okay so this has uh, shown the comparison of absolute and relative growth rate as you can see that these two leaves a and b they are drawn that are of different sizes but shows absolute increase in area in the given time to give leaf uh, a1 see this is a1 and this is b1 however one of them shows much higher relative growth rate so this is this one okay so i hope it is clear to you now that quantitative comparison between the growth can be made in two ways first is absolute growth rate and second is relative growth rate absolute growth rate is a measurement and comparison of total growth per unit time whereas um, relative growth rate is the measurement of growth of a given system per unit time expressed on common basis so this was all about uh, it and my next section of the presentation we will discuss about the conditions for the plant growth and differentiation de-differentiation and re-differentiation so till then stay tuned and keep watching edupedia word videos thank you drop a like and do share leave your comments and do not forget to subscribe for more videos